Welcome, listeners. Today, I have two creepy stories just for your lovely ears. Our first story is by the Night Guard, titled The Night Guard. <laughs> and our second story is titled The Poet by Wee Woo Wee Woo. Both of our stories today are fan submitted, and I can't wait to read them out. A chance to showcase the talent of my listeners. And I love reading these. So, turn the lights off, the sound up, and get ready for something different. It was late November when they finally found the body and the fate of my friend Peter Evans became known. After going missing the previous week on a winter field trip with our school to Stone Lake, There had been little talk of anything else in our little hamlet. There was no foul play involved, just a curious kid barely 12 years of age who slipped away from the group to investigate a secluded area of the lake. The ice, weaker amongst the rushes of reeds, broke apart and his fate was sealed. These things happen, and we all mourned the loss. Peter's mother was now left all alone since his father had moved out and away when Peter was about five, and he was their only child. He would seldom visit them, but always sent these expensive gifts and toys Peter wished for to compensate for his guilt. This year, Peter had promptly wished for a PlayStation 2, and since he didn't wish for anything else from his father, he was sure to get it. We had decided that I should come over the following day and play with him. For me, A PlayStation 2 was out of the question. I was the youngest of four children and times were hard for our family in recent years. We got by, but not much more. Yet being Peter's friend, I never lacked access to these things. Frequently, he would gift me stuff from previous years that he'd grown tired of. As December slowly went by, I overheard my parents talking. Peter's mother was going away to stay with her sister since she couldn't stand being at home anymore with Peter gone. She was selling the house and a moving firm would come by after the holidays to clear the house out and give away all of Peter's things to charity. We were the closest neighbors and as such had been asked to keep an eye on the house. That's when I decided. Peter was dead. He would have wanted me to have his new PlayStation, not some stranger's kid. Why should some unknown kid get my friend's stuff, right? I felt it was only right that I got it instead. Besides, my parents would never know since I frequently got things from Peter and they couldn't tell a PlayStation from a Nintendo. For several nights, I tried sneaking away, yet my father was in the habit of staying up late, so I never succeeded in leaving unnoticed and was sent back to bed. Then... The night before Christmas came along. All us kids were sent to bed early, and after a while, my mother and father tucked themselves in as well, since it would be an early morning. I leaped at this opportunity and quickly snuck outside. The road leading to Peter's house was dark, yet not far. My imagination played tricks on me. I could see shadows amongst the trees, and a dog's howl was maybe a wolf's or possibly a werewolf. I quickly hastened up my pace and arrived at the dark house. The snow and wind had picked up. Perfect. My prints would be erased and no one would ever know I'd been here. I found the spare key in its usual place and let myself in. Walking softly, I headed towards the stairs and the guest bedroom. That's where his mother kept the presents until they were put under the tree. Bringing out my tiny flashlight, As to not alert anyone passing by with the light itself, I hid the beam with my fingers to only let a thin sliver shine through, watching my fingers glow red by the illumination. The closet which held the presents was stacked full. More than usual, that is, and Peter always got plenty. A greedy regret settled on me that I couldn't get more. Eyes on the prize, I told myself. Peter would have wanted me to have it. I read the labels looking for a present with the right size from his father, 
A red one seemed likely. I took it out and teared a tiny hole in the wrapping, seeing the digital bed clock showing 11.56pm. Well, almost Christmas. A PlayStation logo showed in the light. I had it! I stacked the few presents I had disturbed to make it look neat and closed the closet again. Then, as I picked up the box and headed for the door, I heard a creak from downstairs. I quickly halted, sweat instantly appearing on my back as I realize I'm not alone. Slow steps on the floor heading towards the stairs. I hold my breath, my heart thundering in my ears. The stairs creak faintly as someone or something ascends. I slowly let my breath out as quietly as I can. It mists in front of me, and I realize how cold it has become. Then the steps turn towards Peter's and his mother's rooms. I wait as they continue, making sure that who or whatever it might be is far from the stairs. When I hear a door creak, I nearly scream and bolt for the stairs. As I reach them, I see from the other side of the corridor a shadowy figure by Peter's mum's bedroom. It turns around, calling out softly in a far-off voice, Mummy? 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 I freeze up. Peter? The shadowy form turns and rushes towards me. I scream in panic and throw the box at it as I bolt away down the stairs and slam the door behind me. Outside, the weather is even worse and my tracks are almost gone. As I head for my home, a shriek pierces the night as Peter's house fades behind me. I make it home and throw myself into bed and immediately pass out. As morning came, I found myself with a high fever, not being able to attend the opening of presents with the others. By afternoon, I struggled out of bed, finally able to join the others. When evening came, the police arrived at our door to tell us about a break-in at Peter's house. The house had been heavily vandalized, yet whether or not anything had been taken was yet to be concluded. However, they had found a red gift wrap present neatly placed by the stairs bearing my name. And our next story, The Poet. A poet is elegant. I stride through this building, out through the door. What lies beyond? Another door? I hear people scream, and people to tell me to stay, but a poet cannot stay in a ward without any inspiration. A poet is delicate. I find a cafe. I sit down, order some coffee. Suddenly, a man shoves me. Blasphemous fool. I'll get back at him. Soon. A poet is observant. I look around, seeing most if not all. I look here and there, hoping for something to strike a chord and give me a spark of inspiration to nurture and grow. I suddenly see something out of my peripheral vision. Someone odd. He seems normal, but upon closer inspection, I see that his hand is trembling, shaking, as if he was scared, as if he knew me. A poet is not slow. I walk briskly to my home. I enter, quiet, and just as I left it, with a few changes so minor, so small, only a true poet would notice. What a fool to think someone would try to change my house. No matter, I enter my office and pick up my pen. So lightweight, so sturdy, so simple. I put it in my pocket. A poet is not dull. I look around to find traces. I spend 15 minutes in the same spot, trying to figure out clues. Soon, I find some. Small, poorly covered up footprints. Only an idiot would leave. 
I look for where it leads. Into the bushes. Perfect. A poorly chosen hiding spot. A poet is not messy. I finally catch up. I see him on our bench we made together. Worthless moments wasted. I move closer. I see him holding our pictures. More useless items. Angrily, I pick up the pace. He barely acknowledges my existence. I'm so close now. Suddenly, he speaks. I knew you'd come for me, David. They didn't give you prison. They gave you a psych ward. I'm sorry. Ever since you were born mute, I spent all my time with you. Until you tore it apart. Do you remember killing mother and father with that exact pen? Angrily killing them when they did not read your poems? I finally reach him. I pull out my pen. I use it to slash. He trembles. I cut in the cleanest spots to reduce mess, of course. All the while, listening to mumblings coming out of his mouth. After I finish, I lean closer to hear what he is saying. I'm sorry, David. Goodbye. Suddenly, a squadron of police emerge with their guns drawn. Get on the floor now! I won't let them. Put your hands down now! I grab my pen and plunge it into my throat. I'm coming, brother, for old time's sake. Well, what did you think of today's stories? I really enjoyed both of them. Talk about a duo of talented listeners. Seriously, it goes to show how rich my listeners are with creativity and talent. The Night Guard is also a no-sleep writer, and it definitely shows. And a special mention to Wee Woo Wee Woo, who before this wasn't writing at all, to my knowledge. Both of you just get better and better after each story. Now, listeners, I'm sure there are more of you lovely fans out there that have talents like these two that are tucked away. If you're not sure your quality is there, don't stress. Not only can I help you with that, but take your time and send me your stories when you are ready. Most importantly, just writing something down will get that ball rolling. And once the ball is rolling, you won't want to stop. So a big thank you to today's authors, The Night Guard and Wee Woo Wee Woo. I look forward to more stories from both of you in the future. And lovely listeners, tomorrow, I'm going to have Jace York's experience with Bex matched with the creepypasta. So I can't wait to share those stories with you then. And lastly, if you have any spare time up your sleeve and can spare some time for me and the channel, visit me on my iTunes page and leave a review. Your reviews are like digital gold. <laughs> it helps this channel grow as iTunes listeners see what you have to say. And also, it helps all the authors on this channel get even more exposure. And that's so important. As this is a platform to entertain, it's also a platform to bring new authors to fresh ears around the world. And to those of you that have already done this, you are just fantastic. And thank you, listener, for simply listening. And on that note, it is that time. This is the place where stories live, and you telltellers come to listen. Enjoy your day or night, and join me every weekday for our creepy tradition. And as always, till next time.